Hey guys, and welcome back to another video in Lipstick Week. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Wet n Wild Cloud Pout lipsticks. These are, I think, kind of new. I don't really know how new they are at this point, but when I was purchasing them, they were new formulas, at least that's what Ulta said. I bought them off Ulta because I don't think you can get these in Canada yet. To buy off Ulta, I have to use like a express shipping company, what I'm not gonna do anymore. That was just so I could get these lipsticks and some foundations. I know some of you are asking how I purchase these products when I'm in Canada, but that's how I did it. I went through Ulta and a shipping service. I wanna be swatching all of these on my lips as well as on the back of my hand. And I will also include a review. We're gonna start off with the swatches. I did pick up five different shades. Thank you guys as always for watching. I hope you find this video helpful and let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the shade Pour Some Sugar On Me. I should just preface all of these swatches with the fact that my lips are so dry right now, like they're just kind of peeling off. That's not a fault of the lip color, it's just my lips underneath are super chapped. This one is not my favorite color on me. I'm not even sure why I picked it up because I don't like pinks like this on my skin tone. I just feel like my skin looks very washed out and dull when I'm wearing a color like this. Kind of like a nice girly soft pink shade. I just don't think it looks good on me, but I feel like if you have more of a cool undertone or just paler skin in general, I think maybe you might like this one. It's just too much of a white based pink for me. This next one I actually really like. It's in the shade Marshmallow Madness. It's a bit of a rosy nude shade. It's actually one of my favorites. I really like the way this one works with my skin tone. It is still kind of a nude, but it has a little bit more of that warmth and pink to it. This color reminds me a lot of one of my favorite Milani lipsticks in the shade Naturally Chic. It's kind of got that same rosy nude undertone. I just, I love it. I think it's so fresh. I think it's also going to be a beautiful shade for the springtime. It's just giving me very like youthful, fresh spring vibes. Okay, this next shade is in Fluff You. This is kind of a raspberry, like a soft raspberry shade. It's got a little bit of pink in it, a little bit of red, and it's not too deep either. Like it's kind of a shade that could work for everyday makeup looks. It doesn't look super intense or bold. I do like this one a lot. I think it's probably my second favorite after the Marshmallow Madness one, just because it's more wearable. It's not too bright and in your face for a pink. I don't know why my face is so pale in this video. Hopefully when I edit it, it's not gonna look as pale as it does in the viewfinder, but I do have a warm undertone. So with my skin tone, I think this is a really pretty everyday shade. It's just reminding me of like something soft and feminine. It's just, it's beautiful. It's kind Kind of like a rose, I guess. So this next one is in the shade I'm on Cloud Wine. It is a deeper red. It's definitely got hints of berry and purple to it. It's not a warm toned red at all. It is a really beautiful shade. I actually think this one would would have been perfect for the winter time. It is very wine like, like your lips kind of look like they're wine stained a bit. I don't think I like it as much as the marshmallow one or the fluff you shade. And I don't know how much use I'm gonna get get out of it in the coming months because it's not a shade that I gravitate towards in the spring and the summer. But I guess come fall and winter, I'll probably be reaching for this one again. I do think that it's muted look makes it a bit easier to wear and it's not so uh, intimidating as a bolder shade. It is definitely more muted than your typical berry. And this last one is the shade Love You S'more. It's got a lot of warmth to it. Like it's not a cool toned brown. It does remind me of chocolate though, for sure. It's kind of giving me that like super muddy chocolate brown effect, I guess. It's an interesting shade. Browns I don't typically wear except in the fall time. So I guess I would wait on this one to wear again in the fall. So if you're at this portion of the video, you are here for the review. So I was actually quite excited for this lip product when I saw it online because it looked like it would be something that I'd really, really like. And I hate to say this, but I really don't like these very much. Let me just pull up my notes that I took on this product and give you guys 
some pros and some cons to this product because I think it has a little bit of both. Just in general, I found I didn't like this product that much. I believe these are meant to be kind of a similar product to the NYX soft matte lip creams. Like it is a very moussey product. It doesn't have a fully matte finish. It's more like a, I guess like a satin finish. Once it's been sitting on your lips for a while, it does become a little bit more matte. It is very sheer. Like this product is not super pigmented. You need to layer this one on quite a bit, unless you're okay with the sheer coverage. For the lip swatches, I layered them on quite a bit because I wanted to show you guys the colors like as opaque as I could. I find you can wear them sheer, but you need to kind of rub them in a bit with your fingers or just smush your lips together to even out the application because when I do apply them sheer, especially for the darker colors, it looks a little bit patchy and streaky on my lips. So I'm still trying to figure out the best method for wearing these ones with the sheer finish. They're very similar in consistency to the NYX soft matte lip creams. They're very whipped and mousse like. I guess this is kind of like a plus for the product. They are very lightweight on the lips. You can't really feel them on your lips. They're very thin, I guess, and lightweight. I think that's partly due to their mousse, the moussey texture to them. And they're very, very soft. They not only look soft on the lips, but they also feel soft. Those are for sure pros to these lipsticks, like the actual feel of them. They're very comfortable, they don't dry out my lips, and they just feel nice, like they feel soft, they feel lightweight, they make my lips look really nice and soft and kind of like fluffy, not fluffy, but you know, like velvety and blurred. Maybe it could be a positive or a negative, I wanna include it in like my pros to this lipstick, but the smell of them, is just, it's it's actually quite a nice smell. It's very sweet, it smells like vanilla or cookies or something like that. If you're not into the scent, you would really not like these because the scent is quite strong. It doesn't linger, it is very overpowering when you are applying them, like it's a sickly sweet scent almost. Um, very cakey, vanilla-y. It does smell good. I kind of like this type of scent over the fruity or florally lipstick scents. Another plus to this product is the price point. It's super affordable. It's Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild has been really great at not increasing their costs or their pricing, even though like everything else at the drugstore keeps raising their prices. Wet n Wild has stayed pretty consistently affordable. So on to some of the things I don't like about this product. This is kind of a nitpicky point, but I don't like it when lip products have white packaging. The actual packaging of the, the cap here is really nice. It's like a soft feel product, but it is white. And I just, when it's white is on a lipstick, I get it dirty almost all of the time, all the time actually. I wouldn't even say almost, like I always get them dirty. So I don't like that it's a white cap. It looks nice, I get it's like marshmallow themed, but it's just inconvenient. The applicator is nothing special. It's not bad, it's actually pretty good, but it's this. I think it's the exact same doe foot applicator as their cat suit liquid lipsticks actually. Then some things that I really don't like about this product. First of all, it is not long wearing. Not like long wearing lipsticks, aren't that big a deal to me. I don't mind it when lipsticks don't last, but if they're not gonna last, I just want them to fade nicely and wear down nicely on my lips. Like I hate it when your lips just look a mess by the end of the day. And if you're someone like me and you don't like to reapply or you're embarrassed to go to the bathroom and reapply them, if we were working in the office, not at home, obviously I don't care when I'm by myself in my apartment, but when we're in the office, I just would never go and reapply my lipstick. I just always felt embarrassed about doing that for no reason. There's no reason for me to be embarrassed. But anyway, I don't like to reapply my lipsticks. So when a product doesn't wear down nicely, it's just so like, I just don't want to wear it. They pretty much last maybe three hours. And then if you eat a meal or are drinking or anything, it's going to come off. It's going to wear away. I just don't like the way it fades. It kind of crumbles off your lips a little bit, your lips look super patchy, especially, not so much for the lighter shades, but especially for the deeper shades. They look horrible by the end of the day. Like they're just a patchy mess on your lips. Like it's faded in certain sections, but not evenly. It's worn away in the center of your lips and it just looks horrible. The lighter shades are fine. Like Marshmallow Madness wears down nicely. I would totally wear this one to and from the office. The darker shades I thought looked really bad by the end of the night. Other thing that I think is kind of a negative, especially nowadays, is that they use transfer. So I'm just gonna kiss the back of my hand so I can show you. I mean, there's not like a ton of transfer, but they definitely do. 
So you can see that the product has like kind of come off. I think I do like these ones more than the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams only because these ones are more comfortable. I think that the soft mattes from NYX were a little bit drying on my lips. I was wearing them in like the dead of winter, so that could have been why, but um, these ones feel slightly more comfortable. They're not as easy to apply. Like I said, you do kind of have to layer them up a bit. The NYX ones are more pigmented. These ones just feel more comfortable throughout the day on my lips. I think those are like my main points that I want to bring up. The sheerness, the fact that they're very comfortable, that they're not long wearing and they won't last you through a meal. They wear down bad, at least the darker shades wear down bad, and they are not transfer proof. But for me personally, these aren't my favorite formula. That sums up this video. I hope you guys found this review and swatch video helpful. I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and I'll see you tomorrow.